Hey guys, and welcome back to a new Jetpack Compose tutorial. In this video, I will show you how we can create a swipeable image slider here. And you can, of course, replace this content with any type of composable. We also have some page controls down here where we can click to animate between these pages, but we can also simply swipe them. So it's pretty much what in XML was the job of a view pager. We now have a very cool and efficient solution in Compose. For that, let's jump into an empty Jetpack Compose project here in Android Studio. I already added three images of animals here. You can add any type of images you like, of course. And something you need to make sure before starting is that you are actually using Jetpack Compose version 1.4.0 because this new image slider is contained in that version. In combination with that, I recommend to use Kotlin version 1.8.10. And you need to adjust your Kotlin compiler extension version, so for the Compose compiler, to this version since that will work together with this Kotlin version. Once you did that, make sure to synchronize your project and then we can get started coding. First of all, let's create a little list of our um, images, which is simply an animals list. And here we just link our drawable resources. So first of all, our drawable dot cat. Then we have one for the dog and one for the chicken. And inside here in our compose code, we can now start implementing this image slider. I want to put this in a box because we will need to adjust the, the alignment of our page control here. So we can align this at the bottom and I should simply overlap these images. So we just use a box here. And as a content of this, the new type of composable for this image slider is called a horizontal pager. And the same way we have a horizontal pager, there's also a vertical pager. So with that, you could implement something like a TikTok-like video feed. But the behavior of both is exactly the same. So I will just show you the horizontal pager. You should be able to use the vertical one just the same. So let's take a look what kind of parameters this horizontal pager needs. First of all, the page count. So how many pages we have, how many images in our case, which is simply animal.size. Then we have a lot more parameters we could pass here. We could pass a pager state, which is used to uh, comparable to the lazy list state of a lazy column, which you can simply use to animate between pages to say, hey, um, now I want to go to page three programmatically, which we'll then need for our um, page control. So let's add such a pager state here. Pager state, but remember pager state. We need to add this experimental foundation API to main activity by pressing Alt Enter. And we then pass this pager state, was it just called state? Yes, state is equal to pager state. Then we could pass some keys similar to a lazy column, um, which is just a unique identifier for each item to optimize loading these. Since as far as I'm concerned, this is lazy loading here. Yes, you can see pages are lazily placed in accordance uh, to the available viewport size. So this horizontal pager won't compose all the, the sub pages, but only those that are actually visible. And to optimize this kind of update behavior, we can pass some keys like an, a unique identifier. In our case, we can simply use the resource ID of each animal since that is unique. So we can just say animals at the index of it. So it is just the, the index of the current item. And then in here, this is pretty much the same as in a lazy color, just that we don't use these items blocks, but rather just get access to the index here. And then we can use this index to compose the um, composable for the current page. So in our case, we just want to show images pass in a painter resource and we pass in our animals at the index of index. Uh, oops, like this. Um, the content description, let's just pass null here. Content scale is crop, oops, to just always fill the whole size of this pager. And we pass a modifier of modifier.filmx size. And that is already how easily we can create such a pager. Of course, we are still missing the page control, but let's take a look how this looks like in the app. There we go. We see our image. And if we now swipe, we can swipe to the next images. And if there are no more, then we get this little over scroll animation like we also know from lazy list. The transitions are a little bit um, laggy here because I'm using my mouse for uh, for my real device here, if I use my finger instead, it's super smooth, as you can see. But before we get to the page control, I want to show you something else, which is individual for such a horizontal pager. Because we have two different types of um, fill modes, or how is it called? Page, page size here. So how the pages should be positioned. The default is page size dot fill. And this will simply make sure that each page will fill the whole space 
on our screen. However, what's also an interesting page size mode is the fixed mode, where we can pass in an individual page size, for example, 300 dp. Import dp, and that will cause that every single page is now 300 dp wide. So if we now relaunch this, what will happen is, you can see now every single page does not fill the whole screen, but rather just 300 dp. And if we now scroll, we still get the same scrolling behavior, just that these pages are overlapping. So depending on what you're implementing, this might also be an interesting page size mode to look at. Let's switch this back to fill for our use case here, and then get to implement our page control. So below this horizontal pager, let's have a box for that. And here for the modifier, I will just pass in a modifier. So this box will just be this little, um, let me relaunch my other app. It will just be this little container here for these two icon buttons. And for that, I will pass in a modifier. I will offset this on the y-axis by um, minus 16 dp, like this. So we just move it um, to the top by 16 dp. We then want to say fill max width and pass in 50%. So we fill 50% of the width of our screen. We say we want perfectly rounded corners, so we clip it to round a corner shape of 100%. We can give it a background color of material theme that colors that background. We can oops, give it some padding of let's say 80p, and we can then align it in the bottom center of our outer box. And in here, we're now going to place our two icon buttons. So icon button, let's leave out the on click listener for now. And we're just going to pass in an icon, which will be icons dot default keyboard arrow left for the previous um, icon button to get to the previous image. Content description is um, go back. And then we can actually also align this by the way in our box. Um, modifier is modifier align in the center start, so to the left. And then we can copy this, paste it below, and this one will be center end and go forward and the keyboard error right. Like this. So now how or what should we do when we click these icon buttons? We of course need to do something with our pager state. And if we go in here and simply say, okay, um, pager state dot animate scroll to page, that's the function I want to use. Then we can say, okay, we want to animate to the following page index we pass here. How do we get the next page index? We can also use the pager state to get the, the current page and simply say plus one. You can see we still get an error because that is a suspending function. The animation function, it will suspend as long as the animation takes. So to execute that, we need access to a curtain scope, which you can get access to here. Well, scope is remember curtain scope like this. And then we launch a curtain right here, put in this animation function and we are good. Um, and of course, for the previous page, we want to go back. So let's copy this, paste it for our forward button like this. And here we just want to replace the minus with a plus. And that is it. Let's launch this. Take a look here on our device. There we go. Looks exactly the same. We can, of course, still swipe, but we can also click these buttons to now move between our pages. Very cool. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this. I think this is definitely a lot easier than implementing a view pager in XML where you need like an adapter and all these things. So if you enjoyed this, then definitely subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. And I wish you an amazing rest of your week and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.